The other week on Amazon, I found a watch that completely blew my mind for a few reasons. It's the Casio MTD 120D blah, 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 blah. But the three main things that caught my eye were, number one, just the looks, the applied indices, a gorgeous sunburst dial, a bezel that's given me 50 fathoms vibes. I was all in. Secondly, I hadn't really heard of it before. I checked all over YouTube. I could find only two other unboxing videos other than the one I put up recently and no deep dives on this watch. So I was getting more and more intrigued. And thirdly, and what was ultimately the biggest deciding factor was the price for $29.00. I couldn't believe that they were offering that for that low of a price. And really, except for a few changes that we will definitely cover in this review, this could be Casio's best watch ever. So let's take a look at the Casio MTD 120D blah, 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 blah. So here is the watch in question. We'll go over the specs, the design, everything I love about this watch, the few things that definitely need to be improved about this watch. And by the end, hopefully you'll be able to decide for yourself whether or not you want to make one of these your own for the frankly unbelievable price of $29. I want to start not with the specs, but the construction. This is an all stainless steel construction on this watch. And the reason why I want to bring it up so early is there was some confusion on the unboxing video in the comments. A lot of people thinking it's some sort of plated palladium or plated brass. This is all stainless steel. I checked the Casio website. I checked Amazon's listing everywhere. I also use my eyes and my fingers to feel this really great brushing on this stainless steel case. So stainless steel, stainless steel, it is stainless steel. Now let's get into specs because it is a bigger watch, 43 millimeter diameter. It is 50 millimeters lug to lug, a 22 millimeter lug width, but because it's quartz, just 10 and a half millimeters thick. The cool thing about this watch too is the combination of the thinness and the downturn of the lugs. It really does fit on the wrist really well. So even though it is 50 lug to lug and a 43 and a half diameter watch, think twice before you pass on it if you have a smaller wrist because it very well might fit you better than other watches of this size. The bracelet is kind of an oyster style bracelet with high polish center links. Pretty nice bracelet. It doesn't fully articulate. It's the kind of bracelet, well here, these are the links I pulled out. I don't know, someone tell me in the comments the actual name for this style. I've only really dealt with them on Casios and I hate them. They're terrible and they're very, very annoying. However, that's what we got. It is a $29 watch, so I'm not gonna, whoops, complain about that too much. But that's what we have as far as the links. It's a double button push deployant. I somehow managed to dyslexify that. Uh, double push button deployant. And if that's the exact same sentence twice in a row, then I'm having a stroke and somebody call somebody. Of course, a pressed clasp, that's just fine. Let's get to the star of the show, which is the dial. Oh, just two points of micro adjust, so no thank you. All right, the dial is really the star, as I said. This is a gray black sunburst dial that is one of the most active dials I've ever seen, especially in this price range. A really great color. I was calling it similar to the SNXS79 from Seiko during the unboxing. It really is that kind of cool color that can be very, very dark and almost black, but when you hit the light, the grays really, really show themselves. Applied indices all around, double indice at 12, so you have some orientation when the lights are off. The indices, not only are they applied, but they are all loomed. But a cool extra addition that really does help with legibility is the sides of each one of the indices is high polished, so they're kind of loom filled. So in low light situations, the reflectiveness from the indices really does help tell what time it is when it's dark enough to be tough, but not dark enough for the loom to be working. Applied indices as mentioned, but the Casio as well as the water resist 50 meters just printed on a date frame, which is very nice around the day date and Japan movement down at the bottom. Generally just grays and whites and blacks on this watch, but I'm sure you've noticed by now there is an accent of yellow. The tip of the second hand has yellow and there's this kind of track that I thought initially just started at the 12 and ended at the three, but if we really get in here, for whatever design reason, it actually starts a little bit before the 12 and ends a little bit after the three, but there's that yellow track around there 
and the rest is just that gray color. The cool part though is that the texture around this dial is really different and really contrasts from the center. So there's these radial lines inside this track so it gives an extra bit of texture that really does look cool and adds just that extra bit of interest. A high polish chapter ring which I have also mentioned in the unboxing really kind of gives distortion that gives the effect of a domed crystal. This is a flat mineral crystal but when you move it around like this it does kind of look like you're dealing with a dome and the depth that is added with that reflection kind of like when you put two mirrors like one in front of you and one behind you and you have that infinity hallway is a really great choice now the bezel the bezel is an issue and if you've seen the unboxing you know exactly what i'm talking about or if you are an eagle eye and you've noticed that these numbers are facing the same way as these numbers you'll be able to tell pretty quickly that this bezel does not rotate it's an issue. You're gonna have to know that it doesn't rotate. I, I would feel terrible if you bought this watch and expected this thing to move because if it did rotate, this would be probably my favorite Casio ever. But this is a fixed bezel. It is though gorgeous. It looks a lot like a Seiko 55 Fathoms, which should say it looks a lot like a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, the way that they have their kind of retro minimalist bezel design. It's one of my favorite bezel designs. So again, it breaks my heart a little bit that it doesn't rotate. However, the looks, whew, love it. Rounding out the talk of design, it's high polish on the sides even though it's smudgy on the sides because of my fingers and a high polish side where the bezel is. Now you can see there's little grippies all around. So trying to pretend like it rotates, it doesn't rotate. Brushed lugs with this cool radial design or radial brushing rather, which is a uh, kind of rough, like not finely machined. It looks like they used like uh, not the finest grit, but I actually really appreciate that because you can feel it and it kind of gives it a, a tough, rugged feel and also really does prove to me at least that it is stainless steel. Crown guards also, everything's by the way, high polish except for the outer links and these lugs. High polish, push, pull, unsigned crown. Of course, you pull it out one position, you can change the day and the date. I mentioned also in the unboxing, this is the fastest date wheel I've ever seen. What day is it today? I already forgot. Tuesday, I think. Yep. Short-term memory. Gone. Case back. Standard Casio Japan movement. Has the battery, water-resistant. And this is where all the problems started because it says stainless steel back on the back of this case. Generally, when it says stainless steel back, it means the other parts are not stainless steel but stainless steel. The hands I mentioned earlier are also loomed sword slash picket fence hands kind of in between. They're very beefy though, which I appreciate. There was a comment on the unboxing video talking about how this Casio and the Casio Duro have short hand syndrome, but that these work better because the Minitrack is closer in. It's not all the way on the outside where that really cool gray and yellow stripe is there inside so because of that the minute hand is able to touch the minute track which is really cool i'll grab the duro Whoop. just to show you the comparison as you can see the minute track is on the outside there and these hands really are too small also another plus i think with this watch and these hands is that they're beefier these are too thin for me this is a 44 millimeter watch slightly bigger than this one, if only by a half a millimeter. But these hands are thicker, which I think is a way better proportion for the dial. Luckily, this minute track being closer to the hands helps the shortness, and obviously they are way wider, so it takes up more of the dial. Another great thing about this watch is that all the kind of counterbalances on the hands and the second hands, either they're darker or they're just stainless steel and they're picking up the dark reflections from the dial. But either way, they really do disappear, so the hands kind of seem to be floating. Another really cool little bit of attention to detail. And lastly, I mean, this isn't a specific note, but just the fact that everything all comes together so well is really impressive to me, especially for $29. This colorway, it does come in a second colorway, but I've only really been able to find this one, and I think this is the best anyways. 
This colorway is awesome. There's just enough interest. It's not just monochromatic. It's not just the black, gray, white. The little touch of yellow, I think, is fantastic, and I think it might be a little too boring without it. Generally, I'm not a fan of the bright colors. I've kind of stayed away from the orange, second hands, etc. But this little bit of color pop really is like the cherry on top, or the lemon if we want to stay with the correct color. So all that together, I think the design cohesion, all of these details from the different textures, the sunburst dial, the applied indices that really belong on a more expensive watch, the frame date window, just everything combines to be a really great presentation. So here's the loom shot looking really great right now, but of course it has been sucking up all my studio lights for the past 20 or so minutes. Glow's great though. I am not very confident it's going to last forever. I haven't had a Casio where it did, but for the first impressions when you shut off the light or even when you come inside from a sunny day, even during the winter as it is here in St. Louis, you may have noticed that from the outside shots. It's about nine degrees outside today, but either way you come inside, there's a nice healthy glow like your favorite diver may have. And if you noticed, I'm still talking and the watch is still glowing, especially the hour and minute hand. The second hand, of course, as you can tell, unloomed, but no surprise here, the indices are fading first. But for a $29 watch, this loom is just fine with me. All right, I got to cover some negatives on this watch because up to this point, I've been almost overwhelmingly positive. Although, can you blame me? Look at this thing. Of course, number one is the bezel. The fact that it doesn't rotate is a major bummer. It's a double bummer, too, that they even give you these little grips around the bezel. It's almost teasing you, saying, why don't you try it one more time? Nope, it doesn't move. I wish it did. Secondly, the bracelet. It's very comfortable for me, but I may have lucked into that. This clasp, which, by the way, is signed, if I haven't showed you that, the two points of micro-adjustment on it is really inexcusable. I hate it. Minimum of four, in my opinion, if you look at how small that movement is versus how wide a link is, I am lucky, like I said, it fits me, but you may have a slightly tight or slightly loose fit. Also, the links that are hollow and folded, if not mentioned before, also hollow and links, it doesn't articulate completely, so depending on the size of your wrist, if you have a bigger wrist than me, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, you may feel some pressure when you wear it. I ran into that problem with this Casio Royale. Whoops. This bracelet is very, very similar, has similar lengths, has similar articulation, and I do feel pressure on the sides of my wrist when I wear this watch, so just something to watch out for with this guy. But I really got to say, I love this watch. Gorgeous. That dial I can stare at for days, and I have. And it's been on my wrist ever since I bought it. All right, I'm switching the camera angle and we're going to wrap this thing up. It really is a phenomenal watch. Yes, the bezel is an issue, but to be honest, it's bothered me less than I thought it would. I kind of thought I'd order it, unbox it, wear it on my wrist for a day, get too frustrated because I couldn't turn it, and then either chuck it in a drawer or return it. But it's actually stayed on my wrist ever since I ordered it, which I think should speak to exactly how special this watch actually is, despite its shortcomings. As far as the 50 meters of water resistance, I mean, it never said it was an actual diver. And for most of our everyday activities, that should be absolutely fine. So if you can look past the bezel, I think for $29, this is a no-brainer and really is one of the best looking watches I've ever seen from Casio. So if you can kind of ignore the absence of a unidirectional rotating bezel, there's a link below where you can still pick it up for that unbelievable price of 29 bucks. Thanks so much for hanging out with me again today. There's at least two new videos every week on this channel. Thanks if you have already subscribed, it really does help. And I appreciate you joining me on this journey. And if not, that button is right below me. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.